welcome back to my channel so today we'll be looking at the gait cycle so these are the phases of walking and we'll try to explain how human beings walk from a biomechanical point of view so we're looking at uh, forces on the joints of the lower limb and so in subsequent videos we'll look at the ontogeny and the phylogeny of uh, human bipedal locomotion so basically the evolutionary relationship and uh, how it affects uh, human beings in terms of the development of the gait cycle. So there are four conceptual stages uh, that we should be familiar with. So the first one is heel strike. And so in heel strike what you have is dorsiflexion at the level of the ankle joint. You see the heel that is the level of the calcaneus becomes the fulcrum during dorsiflexion. And then you have the weight of the body uh, coming through the center of the mass. So basically this is your line of gravity, that is the R, this is the force of the body. And then the effort is being provided by the anterior compartment of the leg. These are muscles uh, that come from the anterior compartment. So you're talking about tibialis anterior, the extensors, that is digitorum longus, halusis longus and also your peroneus tertius. And so in this motion, what you have is the force in between the fulcrum and the effort. So this is the load in between the effort and the fulcrum. So it's a second class lever. And so this is basically adapted for a mechanical advantage. The second phase is known as mid stance and mid stance is uh, when now the foot moves from heel strike to a flat foot on the ground, what we call plantigrade pattern. So it goes flat on the ground. And so at this point you have full weight bearing on that lower limb. And so the other lower limb usually goes into toe off, which is the third phase. And so in toe off, what you have is plantar flexion at the level of the ankle joint. So this is the ankle joint and the load of the body is passing through here. That's the weight of your body. And then the effort is going through the plantar flexors. So the plantar flexors come from the posterior compartment of the leg, which is divided into two. A superficial compartment and a deep compartment. In the superficial compartment, what you have are the triceps surai. Take about your gastrocnemius, soleus, plantaris. And then... What you have in the deep compartment will be your flexors, so the flexor digitorum longus, the flexor hallucis longus, and then you have your tibialis posterior. So you notice that the effort is here, then you have the load of the body still in the middle, and now the fulcrum shifts to the ball of the foot, basically at the level of the uh, metatarsal heads. And so at this level, the ankle joint still remains as a second class level because what you want is mechanical advantage to be able to lift up the weight of your body. So it's basically like a wheelbarrow. Okay. Remember in a wheelbarrow, this is where your arms will be. You provide the effort, you lift up the wheelbarrow, and then what you have is the load in between there, and then the fulcrum usually at the level of the wheel and the axle. So those three phases usually go in sync. You have heel strike, you have mid stance, and you have toe off. Then toe off leads to the fourth phase, what we call swing phase. In swing phase, the lower limb now goes off the ground completely, and it swings back and forth to create the stride. So when you're walking, there's usually that stride that pushes you forward. And that is what we call the swing phase. And it has three phases. So the first phase is acceleration, which is basically just a continuation of the toe off. So there's that acceleration. And then now you have the forward move, what we call the mid swing. And now deceleration as you go back to heel strike. Okay, so now you've, you've gotten the stride. So that you can be able to push forward and so at heel strike you start again you go to mid stance toe off then swing and so it's a cycle that continues and that is why we call it a the gate cycle so in heel strike 
remember we talked about the concept of the fulcrum being at the level of the heel and your load being the weight of your body and then you have the effort at that point so that is at the level of the ankle joint now at the level of the knee joint you have another concept what you have is the effort okay because during heel strike the knee goes into extension as you dorsiflex your ankle joint the heel uh, the knee joint goes into extension and so the effort will be provided by the quadriceps femoris so you can see your rectus femoris there part of the quadriceps providing the effort the load of the body will be passing through the uh, center at that point and then you'll have the fulcrum here okay so the fulcrum will be posterior so you have the same second class uh, advantage second class lever advantage here because you want to be able to uh, support the weight of the body now during mid stance what usually happens is you may have both lower limbs on the ground and so they will usually share the forces uh, equally now the forces of the human body are divided into uh, six parts so we consider the trunk okay as one segment then each lower limb as a separate segment so you'll have one two three then each lower limb uh, as its own segment so one two okay so the head and neck now usually form the uh, the sixth uh, segment so those, that's how you look at the forces of the body and so when you have the lower limbs uh, on the ground both of them you are going to be sharing the forces equally so that means that you have uh, six segments so this is a sixth a sixth a sixth a sixth that's four over six okay so the four over six uh, that is uh, two thirds so a third now is a sixth for the trunk so remember the trunk is the chest the abdomen and the back and then the head and neck is a sixth so basically this whole region is a third of the forces that you experience at the lower limb so that means that at the end of the day what you're going to be having uh, in each lower limb from the level of the hip joint going down is that a third of the body is going to be supported when you have what you call double leg studs that means both lower limbs are plantigrade so you have a third of the body a third of the body and this is how you calculate them so you don't take in you don't consider the weights of the lower limbs which means if you remove a sixth and a sixth okay that is two over six from the complete six over six what you are left with what you are left with is four over six that means that uh, the trunk head and neck and the two upper limbs that is four over six okay so that means that if you are going to divide that and simplify that uh, fraction it's going to be two thirds that means if each lower limb is going to take the forces equally and it's two thirds Okay, basically above the pelvis, this is two thirds. That means each lower limb will take a third. Okay, so that there is that equal distribution. So from the level of the hip, you take a third of your weight. Okay, and that is why doctors usually recommend weight loss as a way of preventing osteoarthritis, it's because the forces experienced at the level of the joint actually come about because of the uh, weight of the body. Okay, so. If you don't, if you have uh, one lower limb off the ground, then the forces are going to change, and we'll see that during swing phase. Now, during toe off, remember there is flexion of the knee, and there is also plantar flexion. And so, at this point, 
the main thing to remember is that this will be a second class lever the ankle joint is a second class lever so the effort being provided by your plantar flexors the load which is basically the weight of your body passing through the ankle joint and the fulcrum is at the level of the ball of the foot basically the head of the metatarsals at that point so remember this is the metatarsal phalangeal joint that is where the fulcrum is going to be during toe off now during swing phase remember we had the three phases so we had the acceleration okay which is basically just a continuation of the toe off phase then you have the forward move in mid swing and then deceleration as you go into heel strike so this concept brings us to what we call pelvic control okay lateral balance control of the pelvis so imagine two points on the pelvis so take the iliac tubercles and you plot a horizontal line across those points so they should be balanced okay so the pelvis should not tilt in a way that you lose that horizontal balance control so if you go into swing phase what happens is the abductors of the opposite gluteal region so you're talking about the abductors of the hip that is gluteus medius and minimus should contract to ensure that this limb that is unsupported okay the pelvis is lifted upwards so that you have that balance control that means if you are lifting this lower limb of the ground and you don't have uh, any tilting of the pelvis then this side is considered normal so let's say that this is uh, right and that is left so we'll say that the left side is normal so this trendelenburg test will be considered to be normal okay so the patient has uh, doesn't have any uh, trendelenburg gait now in this scenario you've lost that lateral balance you can see the pelvis has tilted so the the lower limb that is in swing uh, is this one so let's call this uh, right this left so the left lower limb is in swing and the right lower limb is in stance okay and so if the left lower limb is in swing and you have a tilt to the left the affected side is the opposite side so this is the affected side because the gluteus medius and minimus on this side should be the ones to contract to lift up this pelvis to prevent that pelvic tilt so the contralateral gluteus medius and minimus should be the ones responsible for offsetting the pelvic tilt and so whenever you are performing this trendelenburg test to look for abductor weakness we say that the side that swings okay we don't consider it we consider the uh, one on the uh, instance and so the one instance the lower limb instance if it's normal then there should be no pelvic tilt because the gluteus medius and minimus on this side will have prevented that tilt to understand this concept better let's look at uh, hip joint uh, biomechanics so the hip joint is classified as a first class lever so uh, just to take you back first class levers uh, the best example is a seesaw whenever you are uh, swinging in a seesaw the fulcrum is always in the midline okay it's at the midpoint so you have forces on both sides and so at the level of the hip joint the articulation between the head of the femur and the acetabular unit so that ball and socket articulation is actually the fulcrum then your forces on either side of the fulcrum so your body weight and the abductor muscles the abductor tension okay so now let's look at this you have the hip abductor forces okay so you have the femur and the acetabulum at that point and then you have the body weight so the natural response is that when the body weight okay uh, pushes down then this one will go up that is the normal uh, this is the normal reaction okay that means the hip abductors 
must contract to balance out the this weight and so it's the hip abductors okay on the opposite side that will prevent the weight of the body from tilting the contralateral pelvis now there are two concepts uh, when it comes to human bipedal locomotion that you can uh, further check out but the basic principle here is that if you consider the normal pendulum usually the ball of the pendulum faces down and the string is usually up so that's usually the normal pendulum okay so this is an inverted pendulum okay it's basically uh, facing opposite so the ball there and the string here so this is an inverted one the normal one should be the ball facing down and the string up and then you watch for the movement of that ball now the reason why human bipedal locomotion during normal walking is considered an inverted pendulum is because the strings are like the leg okay that thread that is holding the ball those are your lower limbs then the mass of your body is considered to be the force coming at the level of the pelvis which is the force coming from the trunk and the upper limbs and so that is the ball okay and so you swing like that okay and so that is the inverted pendulum model and this is only applies during normal walking now during running there is another concept what we call the spring mass model in a spring mass model remember the concept of the spring is to absorb shock okay that's the concept of a spring and so how does uh, shock absorption uh, marry into the idea of the human musculoskeletal system now it's about curvatures of the bones so if you look at the human spine the human spine is actually curved at the level of the neck the cervical part is curved anteriorly what you call cervical lordosis the level of the thorax there's a posterior curvature what you call a thoracic kyphosis then the lumbar region is curved anteriorly a lumbar lordosis and then the sacrum is curved posteriorly a sacral kyphosis then you have the, the same curvatures continue so the femur has an anterior curvature so basically it's like a lordotic concept now the tibia is not really curved per se but it has the fibula for shock absorption so excess forces will pass through the interosseous membrane from the tibia to the fibula then the foot is curved dorsally so the, the foot has, uh, has what you call arches so there's a median longitudinal arch the lateral longitudinal arch and the transverse arch and so those curvatures allow for the musculoskeletal system to act like a spring and that comes in handy during running okay so this is a sample of the questions you may get during an exam related to these uh, principles name two leg muscles actively involved in toe off phase of walking so you can name any of these muscles so any two for your full two marks so the gastrocnemius and the soleus those will be in the superficial compartment of the posterior leg and then flexor lucius flexor deuterum longus will be in the deep compartment of the posterior leg so thank you for your attention and if there are any questions you can leave them on the comment section below